Kira, folks, it's Friday, and I've been doing some integrating, and I thought let's do this session on integration by substitution. So substitution is kind of a clever trick that you can use in quite a few places. Specifically for integration, it comes in handy. And the basic idea of substitution is that you take your variable that you don't want. So if you've got something nasty like x squared in the denominator, you can substitute it out swap it in with another variable, go about your business, and then swap back when you're done. Okay, so when I look at this, let's first of all try to figure out what I can't do. So why do I need a new strategy here? Well, you might want to write the root sign as an exponent with some brackets and turn it into a one-half power. So that seems okay, but if I try to integrate this using the power rule, I'm going to run into an issue here with this x squared. So you may recall that when you take a derivative here, we need to use a chain rule, and so that's going to kind of get in the way, and that might interrupt my integration process. Now the other thing is that we have two functions multiplied by each other. So my first one, remember in here we have multiply, I'll draw a cross or a dot, both mean the same thing. Remember when we differentiate you would need here a product rule in order to differentiate these two functions. And so again when you integrate that is going to get in the way. Okay so let's clear all that out. So my new strategy is going to involve a change of variable and I'm going to introduce a substitution and then I'm going to change my variables. So first of all when I see something like a root sign like this that should be an indication to me that I'm going to try to replace what's under that root. So I can integrate the square root let's say of x pretty easily. That's no problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what's under the root here and I'm going to replace or substitute with another variable. So let's call it u. Substitute with u. So now off to the side I'm going to do some other work. So I'm going to say let u, my new variable, be x squared plus 3. That's it. That's my substitution. Let u equal x squared plus 3. You of course could use a different letter here, but I'll stick with u. Now next up I need to, I'm trying to get to a point where I can match up all my variables. So in my integral as it stands I have x, x, dx, and if I had limits they would also be x. In my new integral after the substitution, well here I'm going to want, let's use a green highlighter, here I'm going to want u, so u, I'm going to want a du, and also these variables are going to have to be replaced with u. So all the bits in green there, they're going to need to match up. Okay, let's clean this up a bit. So how do I do this? Well, I have an expression here, and I'm going to differentiate. So I know how to take the derivative. This is going to be du with respect to x equals 2x and then the 3 is a constant so that 3 disappears. So now I have something interesting. So now I have a dx in my original integral and I have a dx that has appeared in my substitution. So let's try to make this by replacing my new substitution with the dx in my integral. So what I can do is I can split this up and my dx can come across and I can say du equals 2x dx. So now let's isolate dx by itself and dx now equals du divided by 2x. So now I have an expression just for dx here and I can make 
this replacement. And indeed, that's what I'm going to do. So let's rewrite the integral. So I have integral of x, that stays the same. And I have square root of my new variable u. And then instead of dx, I have this new expression. So that is du divided by 2x. And if I extend this divisor line here, we can see that the 2x is on the bottom of the integral. And the du is on the top. And that's what I want. So now I mentioned earlier about these matching. So I need all my variables to match. And at this stage, I have a combination of u and x. So I'm not quite done. So I'll clean out this. And here we have an x on the top and an x on the bottom. So those x's can cancel. And that's convenient. So now I can rewrite my integral as square root of u and then left out my u there and then du. So this is a nice easy integral. Let's go ahead and solve it. So I use the power rule. It's u to the one half plus one. So that's u to the three halves divided by the same number plus c. So I can simplify this is two and then we have u to the three halves which is a square root of u cubed divided by three. So that looks okay. Oh, don't forget your constant. Now I look at my integral and it's in terms of u. But my original integral came in terms of x. So I have one last bit of work to do, and that is to sub back into my original variable. In this case, x and I know that u equals x squared plus 3 so let's go ahead and replace it and I'm going to get this integral equals 2 thirds square root x squared plus 3 all cubed oops as a plus plus c and that should be my final integral after substituting. And now if we look back and we tried to work this out using what we know about our standard integrals, you can see that might have been quite difficult to come up with that 2 thirds coefficient and also um, the exponent, which would be 3 halves or a square root of something cubed. So that might have been a little bit tricky. So substitution should get us there a bit quicker. Okay, let's look at another example. Here I have x times sine of x squared. So the sine of x squared part, because I have an x squared, I'm thinking if I had a derivative, that would be a chain rule. So if I integrate, I also have a chain rule type scenario, and that might give me a bit of a headache. And then I also have here a product rule, right? x times sine of x squared. So a straightforward integral is going to involve maybe a lot of trial and error. So let's use this strategy of integration by substitution. So here I'm going to take the complex part, or what seems to be tripping me up, which is this x squared part, and that's what I'm going to substitute. So off to the side, I'm going to say let u equal x squared. That's going to be my substitution. So maybe straight away I'll rewrite my integral. So integral of x sine of u dx. So I'm getting closer, but I still have x, u, and dx. So I need all three of these to match. So let's keep going and differentiate both sides. So now you can go du on the left, and if you use implicit differentiation on the right, 
we're going to write the derivative 2x and then we're going to write the variable with respect to so 2x dx and that's the same result as we just did um, it's just that the du and the dx are on either side of the equality so now I'm looking to replace dx so let's isolate dx so I can say du over 2x du over 2x equals dx and now I have this expression for dx which I can sub in here so let's rewrite the integral so integral of x times sine of my new variable u and then I'll replace dx with du over 2x now at this stage keeping track of my variables I have an x out front and I have a 2x in the denominator here my u and my du match so that's beautiful that's exactly what I want notice though that the x on the bottom can cancel the x on the top and this is the key moment where you know that your substitution is going to work if you did not have that you might want to go back and try something else or you know follow it through to be sure that it's not going to work but I'm quite confident if those x's go away let's rewrite my integral so I have the integral sine of u du and that's it so that's now a straightforward integration so this integration is negative cosine of u plus my constant so we have that extra negative sign in there make sure you get that right uh, and that's it negative cos u plus c except now I want to convert back to the original variable and I know I had u equals x squared so let's rewrite this one more time minus cos of x squared plus c so that doesn't look too tricky actually minus cos of x squared plus c one thing we can do here that's always nice about integrating is that we can differentiate to check so let's go ahead and do that so let's find the derivative so d by dx of this expression negative cosine of x squared so how do we find this derivative I'll go down the line below so the derivative of cosine is negative sine so that's a double negative of x squared and then I have a chain rule right in here I have a chain rule so that's going to be times 2x double negative turns to positive and I get 2x sine of x squared and now I want to compare so I'm comparing this to my original integral and I see that I forgot something so that's actually good that I did this check right so what did I forget I forgot the 2 and at some point along here if I go back and have a look I dropped a 2 so here's my 2 which goes on the bottom so that doesn't change that doesn't change anything so let's go back and add it in whoops and now indeed when I do this differ when I do this derivative to check well we have an over 2 so I'll just pop it down the back here over 2 and that cancels out my 2 so that differentiate to check help me find that error okay so for this one this looks like the first example that we went through 
except here that I have an x cubed, where the first example we had an x squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our same substitution. So often we'll take the argument, that's the bit under the root sign, and that will be my variable change. So let u equal x cubed plus 3, and then du equals 3x squared dx, and then isolate dx, so du by 3x squared equals dx, and so this term will sub in for this dx. So let's rewrite my integral. So we have x, and then we have square root of u, and then instead of dx, sub in your new expression, 3x squared. So, so far, so good. I see that I have an x in the numerator and the denominator. So let's go ahead and cancel one of those. And then let's rewrite my integral. So what do I have? Root u, and then I have 3x still on the bottom. So let's make some room. Square root of u over 3x with respect to u. So at this point, I'm looking at my extra x in the denominator here, and I'm thinking, hang on, I need to have all my variables match. And in this case, they have to be the new variable u. And so this here is a problem. And this is going to stop me in my tracks. My substitution is not going to work now because I can't integrate with respect to u if I have another variable in there. So we're only integrating with respect to a single variable. So that's going to stop me in my tracks and I need to reevaluate my strategy. So in this sense, integration by parts is a strategy for integrating. It's not an algorithm. So an algorithm, you can chug through the ingredients and you get a result. Here, you might get stuck. So integration by substitution is a strategy that we're going to put in our toolbox, but you're not guaranteed to come up with that integral when you're done. So that's uh, a key thing to note here is that if your integration doesn't seem to work out, that's okay. Go back, have another look, because your substitution might not be fit. So to wrap up this first part, let's look at three more examples, but I'm not going to solve them. We're just going to set them up. So my attack strategy here is to figure out how I can integrate. In this case, how I can find these three integrals. So for my first question here, I have 6x squared, and then I have in the denominator 6x cubed plus 5. So I mean, that to me doesn't look very nice. So this bit in the bottom here, 6x cubed plus 5, having a look at that, I think, well, what can I do with that? If I were to differentiate this term, I would get 3x squared. And then that 3x, the 3 is a constant, so that doesn't cause me any issue. But the x squared could actually cancel with that x squared on top. So it looks like I could have a possible substitution with the denominator here, 6x cubed plus 5. So that looks promising. So I'll leave that there, and we will solve it next time. OK, so having a look at this one, we have sine cubed of x. Remember, if we have an exponent in a trig function, we could rewrite this as sine of x brackets all cubed. Um, and we also have a function times a function, sine cubed x times cos x. So any standard integral probably isn't going to work here, or it's going to be tricky to find the balance. Obviously, when you differentiate and integrate a trig function like sine and cos, you get the opposite. So cos goes to sine, and sine goes to cos, depending on the negative sign in there. 
Okay, but what we can do here as a strategy is we can replace what's inside this so that we have something, something new all cubed. So let's say let u yeah, equal just sine x. And so then we're going to have u cubed. And thinking ahead, the derivative of sine is cosine. So that derivative may cancel with the cosine. So that might work. My third one here, again, I have function x times another function e to the x. And it's not a regular e to the x, right? It's e to the x squared. So I might run into an issue with my chain rule in that exponent. So one thing I can do here is I can take this exponent, which looks like it's going to be the tricky part, and let that be my substitution. So I could say let u equal x squared minus pi and see if that helps. Thinking a step ahead, when I take that derivative, I'll have 2x, and that 2x might cancel with this x. Those x's might cancel each other out. So that will be my strategy. In the next session, what we will do is we will look at each of these and solve them by substitution.